Hey guys, what's up? <laughs> Just getting that out of the way. Hey guys, I hope you guys had an awesome week in FPV. I know I did. This one is a little bit, uh, how should I say, eclectic. I do a little bit of exploring and not just in one bando, but two bandos. One of which is an abandoned missile site. Also, we got a beach car fire that we got involved in. A little bit of a freestyle, for sure. Gordo uh, is pressing his luck and visits the death box. And if you guys know what the death box is, you'll know that uh, I've exploded many, many quads there over the years. And we also have some Tiger long range action, so uh, let's do this. So guys, let's start off with a site I call the death box. Yeah, I don't really know why it has to be so dramatic there, but every time I fly there, something happens, I explode my quad. It's not necessarily a hard spot to fly. It's just my darn luck. I mean, this place, if I was Superman, this place would be my kryptonite for sure. Because just stuff happens out of chance. But Gordo wanted to up the ante a little bit. Ooh, look at that. He wanted to Matty flip into the death box. And I was like, Gord, you know what? That's, uh, you're on your own there, buddy. So, uh, if you want to fly autonomous, then, uh, go for it. And you know what? He took me up on that challenge, and he did. LA. On a Saturday night in the summer, sundown and they all come out. Lamborghinis and the rented Hummers, parties on to the head in downtown. You look stunning, dear, so don't ask that question here. This is my only fear that we become. Beautiful people Drop top designer clothes Front row of fashion shows Surrounded but still alone Let's leave the party That's not who we are We are, we are, we are We are not beautiful And that's not who Well, congratulations, Gord. You pulled it off. You did a half Maddie into the death box. And as you guys know, uh, Gordo actually kind of uh, duped me into doing Maddie flips last week, and he's just been in this mad Maddie flip ping spray, I guess. But it didn't come for free. It came at a price. So Gordo actually got stuck on the roof of the death box. <laughs> Thank goodness for turtle mode. <laughs> Remember the days of no turtle mode? There was only one thing left for me to do, and just walk up and grab Gord. Well, I've been never on top of the roof of the death box. I got lucky because I get probably one of my props came off and I don't know, man. Turtle mode worked okay, but freaking uh, nothing else. There's Gord. Oh, I broke a prop. That's what happened. Whew, you got lucky, dude. But my luck was just about to run out. I had this idea of visiting a bando site that was a nuclear missile site. I know what you're saying, but this place has been bando for around 40 years. Last time I was here was 2013. And one thing I can tell you about the place was it was all fenced off and it's got no trespassing signs everywhere and it's got this sign that says photo enforcement on it. So as you can imagine, I've always been leery about stepping onto the property. All right guys, check this out. I'm gonna show you guys something. So if I just float up this road, so here's the entrance to the missile site. All right, so check this out. 
We got uh, whatever this is, security cameras in use. And also, this is how people be getting in here. But um, I ain't about to do that. And we also got this barbed wire fence here. And it says no trespassing, photo enforced. But right over here, this way, is uh, where the missile, whatever it was, offices or bases were, so crazy stuff. Things are different now. I have Eve. I had this idea of sending Eve over the trees and then over the site just to see what I could see. I would launch from here, but the thing is, is I don't want to look all weird because there's houses uh, on this block too, so. Uh, I'm gonna need to take off from another site that I saw. It's a little bit riskier because I am I have to travel uh, a little bit of distance and it's uphill and there's trees and higher elevations so there's a chance that I could lose RC signal at a, at a certain altitude so I just need to find out what altitude that is, right? And I, the only way I can actually tell that is by flying it, but luckily I got Eve so uh, DJI, uh, don't let me down, all right? All right, found a launch zone that doesn't make me look like a weirdo. I just didn't want to launch from the side of the street. It's a little bit further out. And uh, the thing is, is I need to fly over these trees too, <laughs> uh, just to see uh, if this missile site is still there. So my altitude, I'm gonna have to max my altitude out around uh, 350 to 400. So hope, I don't know, man. I guess the worst that can happen is I just hit return to launch, right? So, Eve, gonna power up some Eve. The funny thing was, once I got over there, all the buildings that I wanted to go and visit had been taken down to their foundations. It was good that I actually didn't make this elaborate plan to go in and, you know, sneak onto the property because I wouldn't have found anything in the first place. The thing was, a local newspaper visited this site years ago and took some pictures of it. So I'm going to share those here with you so you can kind of see why I wanted to go there so bad. Check it out. All right, I guess it's still there, and as you can tell, I'm lavishly bringing Eve home, return to home style. So, mission accomplished. Man, this is pretty cool, because I was never able to get on the property, because it's all fenced off, and trespassing, and now I got helicopters coming in for me. Uh-oh. Nice job, Eve. All right, let's do a little bit of that. And then a little bit of this. All right, looking good. And now for the car fire. As you guys know, me and Loach have been skateboarding lately, just kind of enjoying rolling around and cruising on a board. There's nothing like it, especially down at the beach, right? When there's like so many people around and it's just a nice way to get around. Well, during the afternoon, uh, me and Loach were rolling by this van that was on fire and this guy was totally freaking out and he didn't know what to do he was on the phone with the fire department and uh his car just started smoking up right there on the sidewalk so skating along and apparently this dude's car's on fire it's all leaking over there it's battery acid so uh doesn't look good and then loach is over there he's directing traffic like it's the Armageddon. And my brother being who he is, he just tried to help out. So he was directing traffic and asking people for fire extinguishers. Finally, one of his friends rolls by 
and gives him a fire extinguisher and puts out the fire. So lucky for that guy, Loach came around and helped him out. Boy, that's a way to start an afternoon. Hey man, sometimes you just gotta let things go. Other things are important, food, loved ones, whatever. Hey man, that's so, true brother. Hey man, it's not your fault. All right man, hope the evening gets better for you. Oh it will, God bless, thanks right. so much. Now I gotta deal with the fire department. You'll be all right. Yeah, man. Well, a little bit after that, we found ourselves in front of a familiar site. So you've seen it a million times on my vlogs, right? So this place, I flew back in 2013. I actually called this out in my last video when Tiger flew Iron Man style. Well, anyways, this bando has been closed down. It's been fenced off for as long as I can remember. People were getting in there and it was definitely before my time. So there's no way that anyone can get in there now because there's a lot of security involved, there's different ownership. Uh, it's just locked off. But there was a specific feature that I've always wanted to see. Uh, people were graffitiing on the roof and this roof kind of had this platform on top of it as well. And it's this building has been around since 1911, so it's definitely well over 100 years. I think it's good that people can't get in there, but it is a graffiti kind of museum, right? Locked, in, locked down forever. But there's this platform that people get up on when people urbex it, and then there's this uh, other rooftop that people get on uh, and just spray paint up there. I just kind of wanted to always see it. And now that I have Eve, I decided to try and uh, adventure up. The only thing was it was super windy that day. So I guess I would find out exactly how well Eve could handle the wind during her power hovers. Wow guys, I haven't made a power hover video like that in quite some time. Pretty much since I started flying acro and mini quads, it's been a while. Alright, now this part of the story is for all you Tiger fans. I also had four new packs from REQ that I needed to break in. So I've been kind of doing that slowly during the week, and today I really, really wanted to get a beach trace. So there was this beach I had in mind, and it's not the normal beach that I go to that you see me at, uh, lately I should say. And I decided to wake up really early in the morning. So early in the morning means about 5 a.m., right? Right at dawn. The only problem was is when I got there, number one, it was high tide. Maybe I should have looked at the tide schedule. But there were people all over the place. I couldn't believe it. Uh, there were fishermen, right? There were boats all over the water and there were people all in the shore and there was nothing to trace whatsoever. So I decided to get some coffee and think about, hey, it's early enough that I can actually go and, you know, do something else. So I ended up going back down to the beach you guys know and love. The thing is, is I flew a different part of it. 
okay? This part I usually can't get to because this is the part where people just congregate, right? And I don't blame them. It's sandy and, you know, it's nice there and it's near restaurants. So why not, right? I mean, I do the same thing when I'm down there. But at six o'clock in the morning, there's literally no one there. I had this one guy setting up his tent and then I had this other guy just kind of waiting in the shoreline. I know, six o'clock in the morning, right? Man, people get up early around here. I'm like, I'm one to talk. Since it was practically all clear, I got a pretty epic beach trace. Check it out. All right, mission accomplished, right? You'd think, hey, you know, I'm done for the day. I'm going to pack it in. But no, definitely wasn't. There's been this ship that's just been kind of sitting in the harbor for a while. And since I had Tiger out there, I was like, you know, maybe this, this could be its first bona fide mission. Flying right over the water, you know, getting a nice little orbit around the ship. Maybe doing a few tricks over the ship and, you know, coming back home real quick, right? Hit it, quit it, get some epic footage. The only problem is, is when I rolled up and I had everything plugged in, I do what I normally do and I run a spectrum analyzer on the crossfire. Thing was, was the noise floor was up super high. It was in the higher 80s, right? Uh, usually when I fly crossfire, uh, it's usually in the 120s to 110s. And the lower that number is, the better your range will be. So the higher that number is, or closer to zero, the less range you're going to have. So what I knew was the noise floor down where I was at was really high. And I have fail-safed down there before on Crossfire, uh, but it, the RF was never that high when I did that. So it being a little bit higher than usual made me kind of think twice about it. But I had the idea of, you know, hey... Let's check out, you know, 2.4 and 5.8. Maybe those bands would be better. And just for shits and giggles, I plugged in Eve. And sure enough, on the 5.8 band, I had a couple channels, actually. A couple channels closer to negative uh, 100. And that meant I probably had a safe bet of flying Eve over there. Plus, EVE has a better return to home feature than Betaflight does. So if anything were to happen, I know that EVE would just kind of hang there uh, or it would just turn back and come back home. So really, it was pretty much a stress-free situation. But I just I didn't realize how stress stress-free it was. It takes all the fun out of it. I'm uh, literally just rocking tap to fly and drinking coffee as uh, EVE is flying out there to that ship. <laughs> the hell man <laughs> the hell is my world coming to literally i just sat on a bench 
I drank my coffee. I used uh, something called Tap to Fly. It basically flew itself over there while I was just kind of enjoying the morning, and I really wasn't even paying attention to it. Uh, I got my shot, right? And it came back home and landed by itself. Wow, guys, Eve actually made it over there. Didn't have enough power to, like, orbit the ship, but... I got out there, and Eve's coming back by itself, so... Seriously, this is taking all the fun out of stuff. It was only... The ship was only 2,500 feet out there. I'm pretty sure Tiger would have made that, but... I just want to take a chance with that one. You know what I mean? So, we are just going to wait until uh, Eve gets back, I guess. Should be any time. <sighs> yeah. All in, the matter, all in the matter of minutes, right? Amazing. The thing was is, you know, DJI footage is really straight. Uh, I mean, it... I guess it's not juicy, right? That's why us freestyle pilots do what we do because we want the juicy footage. Welcome back, homegirl. Right, seriously, that was a little bit embarrassing. <laughs> that I had to send <laughs> Eve out there to get that but guys I'm, I'm telling you that's why you run a spectrum analysis you know what I mean you at least I got out there and got a really nice shot of the ship that's just sitting in the harbor it really wasn't that far it was only it was maybe under half a mile away but at half a mile with Tiger with a really high noise floor it might as well have been a million miles away I probably would have been okay, but I just didn't want to risk it. I've nearly lost Tiger at that same exact beach before, and I just wasn't willing to take a chance on that again, especially this morning. And guys, if you liked this video, give me a thumbs up and continue to subscribe. And if you're coming here week after week and you're not subscribed, what are you doing? All right, guys, I'll see you in the next one.